My lord, it has begun. The power is already building. Are you ready for your task? We shall not fail you, my lord. The price of failure is our again. God, go with you. the world from Beijing to New York there are reports of earth tremors who is it Vernon Blier it's Nico Collard you're early you said it was uh, urgent We don't have much time. The power sources are building to a peak. It's all in the manuscript. Look, I decoded it. No one's ever done that. He paid me serious money. But the Earth, we're all in danger. Now they want to kill me because I know too much. Seatbelt fastened, I wasn't going anywhere. 
I unfastened the seat belt carefully. Whoa, Harry! What's going on? Harry? Man, that was close. We weren't safe at all. We were balanced on the edge of a cliff. And now I was trapped in the rear half of the plane. You never know when a beer is going to come in handy. The impact from the landing had twisted the door frame. Buckle and strap held the crate tightly to a metal frame. The buckle was quick release. I soon had the crate freed up. Harry Gilligan, the pilot, out cold. Harry! Harry, wake up! <laughs> Slapping him wasn't gonna work. Searching Harry turned up a handy bottle opener. Mate, oh, came to a while back. <laughs> Thought I'd grab 40 winks. Oh, I don't get much chance in my line. Uh, oh. What were you doing flying us into that storm? You nearly got us killed! Oh, calm down, will ya? The storm came from nowhere. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Weird. So how far is it to the landing strip? Well, not far. We were right on top of it when the storm hit. Harry's fire extinguisher was in worse shape than Harry. The glass was cracked. I wasn't strong enough to push it out. I wasn't strong enough to push it out. Here goes! Whew. 
Yes! You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. Do you drink this stuff all the time? Ah, tastes like angel sweat. The plane's completely trashed. Ah, no big deal. Well, how can you be so calm about it? I won it in a card game. Terrific. Got a free tank of fuel, too, which was lucky. Why? Well, we wouldn't have got here without it. I borrowed your bottle opener. No sweat. I was going to need more weight at the back of the plane. But what? Are you trying to kill us? You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. Harry, we need more ballast at the back of the plane. Okay, George, if you think it'll help. Just don't move! You bet! No! Not yet! Harry, stay there! Why? Whoa! That was close. Oh, I don't know. Could have been worse. Yeah? I might still have been in it. Trying to cheer me up, Harry? Ha! Ah, you know, you're not bad for a yank. That makes me feel a whole lot better. We make a great team. Hmm. Oh, I could help you out. Here, with your work. Be your driver. Sort out the locals. Harry, like I told you, I'm only here to meet someone, then I'm out of here. Oh, yeah, maybe I know the fella. I doubt it. Guy called Chalmundali. Never heard of him. Exactly. What's he do? He's a scientist. Well, what kind of a scientist? He lives in the jungle, says he's built a machine that can create limitless energy. I'm a patent lawyer. He wants me to write the patent. Make us all rich, okay? Capiche? Oh, I see. A mad scientist. <sighs> Next time, I'll avoid the scenic route. Yeah, well, when you've had your bit of fun, I'll see you at the top.
everything I know! For which I am deeply grateful. Nevertheless, it was always my intention to kill you. Goodbye, Mr. Joel Mundley. How many times? It's not Joel Mundley, it's... It was a Sunday morning. I was three months behind on the rent. And my editor had given me another bum assignment. An interview with some hacker about the end of the world. Where had it all gone wrong? Was I never going to get that lucky break? What had happened to my glittering career in journalism? And then, everything changed. It was quiet, but that didn't mean the place was empty. The door was securely locked. I needed to find another way if I was going to get into that apartment. There were no messages on the pad. A pencil hung beside it on a piece of string. The door was locked. Somehow I was going to have to climb past the railing to reach the apartment windows. Through the grime I could see a shape, a shape that looked a lot like a body. It was the hacker's window all right. I knew that climbing balconies was crazy, but the story had me hooked and I wasn't about to let it go. It was pretty dark but I could just make out the shape of a bed. There was a gap, but the latch meant it was still closed. It's true, a press card can get you in anywhere. Just one little wiggle between the window and the lock and the latch lifted. Here goes. Whoever did the dusting here never got round to the TV. Cold Singapore noodle with tea bag. Gross! The wardrobe was stuffed with unwashed clothes. Disgusting. I couldn't hear anything. The guy was dead all right.
It was a shell casing from the gun the killer used. I held on to it. I needed any clue I could find. Who needs ornaments when you've got a TV? I knew I had to search the body. It was still warm. All I could find was his business card. Vernon Blier, software consultant. This was the crazy geek I'd been due to meet, all right. Maybe he wasn't so crazy after all. He was dead. Very dead. The computer had been wrecked. Someone had removed the hard drive in a hurry. Oh, yes. Really? You obviously didn't make an impression the first time. You won't be so clever when I killed you. Time's up! You're not going to stop us this time. I never forget the face. So why had I forgotten hers? The number of the phone was 01237480019. There was a light flashing. A message had been left on the answer machine. Maybe there was a clue on the answer machine. You have three new messages. Oh, Vernon, darling, it's Mamo here. I'm at my wit's end. I've given your trousers three washes at 100 degrees and that stain still won't come out. It's more like cement than mayonnaise. Anyway, the ironing's done. Oh, I hate these machines. Au revoir, à dimanche. This is Nico Coladia from La Liberté. Just to say I'll be round at eight as promised. Goodbye. Fernand, it's Beatrice. Good luck with the report. I'll be waiting for you in the gardens afterwards. Love you, Snooky. Snooky? Perhaps I should make a call. I wondered if Andre might have any ideas. Andre Lobino? Hi, Andre. My dear Nico, how are you? Having one of my interesting days? I was about to interview a guy when somebody shot him. My God, are you hurt? I'm okay, but the killer escaped before I could stop her. Her? A woman? That's right. And it's not the only strange thing. I think this is more than just your ordinary homicide. Oh dear, are you off on one of your little adventures again, Nico? Hey. What do you mean? I suppose at least that idiot Stobar isn't involved this time. Andre, I was nearly killed. Okay, okay. Trouble is, I can't find any leads to follow up. The kiddo must have left a trail of some kind. Search the whole area for clues. I'll see what I can turn up. Andre, I'm going to get back to the investigation. Okay, Nico. Oh, and what I said earlier, I'm sorry. Don't worry, Andre. 
I ask for it sometimes. But you know, George, he was a lot of things. But he was never an idiot. If you need my help, be sure to call me. I was lucky the pan had deflected one of those bullets. The fridge door had just saved my life. Someone had thrown away a bank statement. Someone had thrown away a bank statement. No way was I doing that. According to the bank statement, Vernon Blier was pretty short of money. Maybe that's why he'd planned on selling his story. The rug was cheap and nasty. I pulled back the rug. One of the floorboards was loose. The floorboard lifted up easily. In the space below, there was a small safe. I could have hit buttons at random, but getting the combination that way would have taken weeks. The picture was a pleasant touch. Another Steve Jobs original. The door was securely locked. When in doubt, search the trash. But there was nothing of interest. It was just an old sheet of newspaper. But you never know what might come in handy. Bonjour. Yes. I wonder if you can help me. I doubt it. And anyway, I'm on duty. It's pretty quiet this morning. It's Sunday. What do you expect? Did you see a dark-haired woman a short time ago? No. You seem very sure. My job is to look at cars, not people. I must find her. She nearly killed me. How terribly dramatic. As a matter of fact, it was. Spare me the story, please. Bah! What 
What does this prove? Any fool can throw together a fake ID. True, but only a real fool would impersonate a journalist at my paper. Do you happen to know a young computer programmer called Vernon? Does he have a car? Not that I'm aware of. Then it is highly unlikely that I have met him. Take a look at this. Interesting. 12 millimeter. And recently fired. That's right. But how do you know about firearms? Let us just say, I have not always been a traffic worker. What else can you tell me about it? From the head stamp? Manufactured in Prague. And the gun itself? The new Magnum, if I'm not wrong. You can tell all that from the shell? You just have to know what to look for. It came from the gun of the woman who tried to kill me. This is not a Saturday night special. You are dealing, I think, with professional killers. Can you help me? Fire away! my little joke. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Hi. Well, hi there, beautiful. You are looking for something? I might be. <laughs> you have come to the right place. Right place, right guy, huh? That's how it looks to me, too. Were you around a little earlier? Oh, I've been around a while. Oh, that's good. I'm a reporter, and I need to ask you a few questions. Did you see a woman run past a little earlier? I don't think so. Women usually slow down on this corner. They probably can't believe what they're hearing. What? I said I can quite believe it. You could try a twitcher. Who's he? She. The traffic warden. Doesn't miss a thing. Do you happen to know a guy called Vernon? The coder? Yes. Yeah, he's cool. Hangs out in the park with his girlfriend. Where's the park? Just down there, where Twitcher hangs about. About Vernon? Yeah? I'm afraid he's been killed. Shot. Oh man, that's too bad. Still a neighborhood like this, only the brave survive. Huh? Have you seen a shell casing before? Sure. It's from a real gun. Big deal. It was a big deal. For somebody. So where's your posse? What? Big guy like you. Gotta have a posse, surely. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, I got two. Wow. Uh, how about you? you? You got a posse? Oh, yeah. But I like to keep it secret. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. I tell you, I've had enough of this job. 
Put the in, the out, the same old drudgery. Why don't you give it up then? Give it up? Who do you think you are telling me to give up my job? I thought out you were too good for the likes of me, I expect? No, not at all. I didn't mean... I was a dancer once, you know. At Le Moulin Rouge. So stick that on your velo and ride it. That's wonderful. Of course. Alphonse, <laughs> he wouldn't have any of it. I'll not have you flashing your knickers out of a Paris, he said. Get a proper job. So, I did. A real liberated man. Uh, he was an angel. I won't hear a word against him. Did you see a dark-haired woman a short time ago? No. Perhaps that dear traffic warden might help. She always knows what's going on. Do you know a young man called Vernon? I'm sure I don't know what you're suggesting. I am a married woman. Of course, between you and me, in my dancing days it was a different matter. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Au revoir! What have we here? It was a wig, an expensive one too, but more important, it was an exact copy of my own style. That's why the traffic warden didn't see a dark-haired woman. The label inside had been cut out. The killer had covered her tracks. Almost. There were a few strands of blonde hair inside. So the woman I'm after really has blonde hair, not black. I considered leaving the area. And decided to go back to my apartment. It was a photo of my old friend, George. I wondered what he was doing right now, probably running a clam bake somewhere for his law firm. We had some good times together.
and more than our share of dangerous ones too. The bathroom door was looking a little shabby. I had not had the chance to read half the books on my shelves. I didn't know why I kept buying them. I was scared to look inside for fear of what I would find. My battered old phone had seen better days. I thought I should check my messages. You have no new messages. So much for my busy social life. Perhaps I should make a call. I wondered if Andre might have any ideas. Andre Lovino. Hi, Andre. I found a wig that must have belonged to the killer. How do you know? It's brand new and was dumped near the killer's escape route. There were some blonde hairs inside the wig. That narrows the field down a little. Maybe someone saw a blonde. Could be. There's a safe in the apartment, hidden under the floor. In the coder's apartment? That's right. Seems to me you need to find the combination for that safe. Andre. I'm going to get back to the investigation. I considered leaving the apartment and decided to visit Vonnen's place. Hi. Well, uh, hi there, beautiful. Nice board. Uh, it's not uh, just a board, it's uh, what you do with it. So I hear. The woman I'm looking for is a blonde. <laughs> Me too. You're a funny guy. Hey, I am too, please. But seriously, didn't you say you were looking for a woman with dark hair? Did I? You've got me all confused now. I uh, know, uh... I have that effect on women. I haven't seen any women running around. Most babes tend to stop when they see how I can handle a board. Well, I'd better get back to my investigating. A uh, woman's work is never done, huh? Bonjour, madame. Pah! You again, huh? Can't you see I'm busy? Have you seen a young blonde woman by any chance? I certainly have. Skinny looking thing, like you. Thanks. Which way did she go? She got into a sports car and drove off. Do you happen to know the make of car? What do you take me for? Some kind of mechanic? You'll have to ask someone else. Just one thing. Your husband, Alphonse, is he around? No. I thought perhaps he might have seen something. It's unlikely. Why? He left me 20 years ago. Ran away. Oh, I'm sorry. <gasps> Don't be. Happiest day of my life. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Au revoir.
just was sitting in the gardens waiting for her boyfriend. One good thing about being a goth, you don't have to dress up to be in mourning. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour. Are you Beatrice? How do you know my name? I'm Nicole Collard. Vernon is going to meet you. That's right. He was supposed to come here afterwards. Where is he? I'm sorry. Vernon is... He won't be coming. What's happened? Did you see a blonde woman a short time ago? I don't know. Tell me about Vernon. Talking to a goth about death felt like being in a vampire movie. Beatrice, I'm afraid I have some bad news. It's Vernon, isn't it? He's dead. What? I'm sorry. No! You're lying! I don't believe you! Bonjour. Yes. Did you see a blonde woman running by here earlier? Yes. Around your size, good build, muscle tone, shoe size three, maybe four, and I think not French. That's amazing. No, not amazing. Just good training. Training? I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to tell you anything more. Did you see a sports car earlier? I see a lot of sports cars in the course of a day. If you had some details, I could help. Did you see a sports car earlier? I see a lot of sports cars in the course of a day. If you had some details, I could help. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Hi. Well, hi there, beautiful. Don't suppose you saw a sports car in the area earlier. The red E-type Jag, you mean? Yes. Why did you notice it? I used to run one a little like it. Did you happen to get the registration number? Hey, there's only one set of numbers I like. And I'm not talking shoe size, huh? Thanks. Anyway. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Bonjour. Yes. Did you see the E-type Jag that was in the area earlier? Yes. I did. I believe it belonged to the killer. And they say crime doesn't pay. What can you tell me about it? It was bought illegally. I gave it a ticket. Great. Do you have the registration number? Uh, here it is. 451 CAC75. Merci. Can you tell me anything else about the car? Hmm. You know? There was some kind of mask on the passenger seat. Mask? You mean, like, a child's mask? No, an old mask. The kind they wear in a theater. Merci, madame. You've been a great help. It is but a courtesy from one professional to another. Of course. Sounds like the police are on their way. 
I would appreciate it if you kept our little conversation to yourself. You understand? Of course. I wouldn't want to blow your cover. Exactly. By the way, just who do you work for? Can I trust you? Of course. One day soon, the aliens will land. We are preparing to fight them. You may join us if you wish. That's a uh, very kind of you. But I have to go now. Au revoir. We are questioning everyone in the area. What is your name? Nicole Collard. It's her, all right. Please come with us. And this is... Come on, speak up! Nicole Collard. Aha! The woman he had arranged to meet. She's a tough one, I think, sir. Like me to loosen her tongue a little? Not quite yet. Your identity card, please. My press card. A journalist. Typical. You have a problem with journalists? Only the spineless, lying, interfering variety. Looks like I'm in trouble then. She's the murderer, monsieur! Lock her up before she kills us all! Control yourself, madame. I'm conducting an investigation here. And we're getting on so well. How did you know the dead man? He contacted me through my paper. He wanted to meet. Why? Some nonsense about the end of the world. Why did you kill him? I didn't. But you admit you were here. He was already dead when I arrived. I broke in through the bedroom window. The killer was still here. And? We fought through there, in the kitchen. Then she ran off down the fire escape and I lost her. Hmm. There are certainly signs of a struggle. Inspector. We. Oui? The woman I fought was really a blonde. The neighbor said she had dark hair. She wore a wig. How very convenient for you. Here's the wig the killer wore. I'll take that as evidence. Where did you find it? Over the wall at the back of the apartment. Oh, I see. How terrible. You've been framed. Correct, Inspector. She's the killer! I saw her with my own eyes! I've got the number of the killer's car. My, you are being helpful. Are you quite sure you're a journalist? Do you want the number or not? Very well. 451 CAC 75. Thanks. Have you any idea why he was killed? None at all. Perhaps it was to stop him talking to me. Not everybody rates journalists so highly, mademoiselle. How did you know Vernon was due to meet me? Your message on the answer phone. Am I free to go? Don't let her get away! The evidence is clear enough. I'm placing you under arrest, Mademoiselle Collard. Officer, take her away. With pleasure, sir. seconds and he could have told me so much. Poor guy. This was the kind of job I could do with my eyes shut. In fact, that's normally how I did it. All I found was his ID. 
Chalmundali, the guy I was supposed to meet. The workbench was a mess, but I hadn't flown halfway around the world to critique someone's housekeeping. In amongst the junk was a postcard, all the way from England, someplace called Glastonbury. It was signed Bruno. A second look turned up a magnifying glass. Suddenly I was five years old and back in California, setting fire to my father's son hand. A couple of packing cases. Someone was obviously in a hurry to leave. They'd been packed in a rush. There was nothing inside it that was any use to me. There was nothing else of interest. It was like a giant omega. And in the center, some kind of slot. Pressure pad trick, eh? center was a hole. I stuck my finger in the hole. Nothing happened. Wow. So the guy actually built the thing. I wondered if I could get it to work. Fluttered like an engine starved of fuel. attracted some attention. Question was, good guys or bad guys? I took the lever. Rod looked about the right size to fit the hole. Cool! It fits! I removed the rod from the hole in the wall.
There was a bird's nest up on a small ledge, but it was out of reach. That did the trick. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of a familiar shape. Harry had made it after all. It was a statue carved from stone. The back had been hollowed out. Inside were the remnants of a fire. It was full of charred wood. I didn't want to move it. This was my kindling. to the office in Idaho. I'd had my fill of patents. No, nope. I was going to England to find the mysterious Bruno. Glastonbury, England. Home to more legends and mystical baloney than you can wave a wand at. Joseph of Arimathea was supposed to have traveled here from the Holy Land. And he didn't do it to buy an overpriced crystal. Somewhere, in amongst all this New Age hokum, was a guy called Bruno, and I was going to find him. I wasn't leaving until I'd finished what I'd come here to do.
I wasn't leaving until I'd finished what I'd come here to do. Good morning! Oh, that's easy for you to say, isn't it? Well, yeah, isn't it? No, sir, it is not. What's so bad about it, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Am I? Not possible, sir. Unless you're a father, and you're not, are you? Well, n no, but how did you know? Look at you. Callow face, unfurrowed brow, air of profound optimism. So just what is it that only a father would understand? I could tell you, but you wouldn't comprehend. Try me. I kept sea monkeys once. I mean, how different could it be? Very well. Are you aware of the annual Glastonbury Popular Music Festival? The Glastonbury Popular Music Festival? Hmm. That's one of the most popular music festivals on the popular music festival calendar. My daughter, Melissa, attended it this year. Against my wishes, of course. You're not a fan, huh? My dear boy, joining a throng of semi-clad youngsters, gyrating in a mindless hypnotic trance to music which turns their hearts into yo-yos, all the while feasting on hippie fast food, strange alcoholic concoctions, and mind-bending hallucinogenic substances is not my idea of fun! Whoa, bring it on! I beg your pardon? I said, did your daughter enjoy it? She didn't come back. Ah, have you told the police? This isn't a job for the police. Melissa called me to say she wouldn't be coming home. She called from a Glastonbury number. She's still here somewhere. And if she's taken up with someone, well, I've got my Purdy in the Land Rover. Purdy? Twelve bore, double barrel, vermin for the extermination of. Does this ID card mean anything to you? It's not yours. Never seen the chap. Did you find it? Yeah. Then you should hand it in at the police station. My name's George Stobart. A Yank, eh? Colonel Barclay. Rutland Lancers. Third Battalion. Retired. You know, I had a feeling you might be a soldier. Can take the fella out of the army, can't take the army out of the fella, eh? It could have been that. It might also have been the aura of latent violence that surrounded him. Recognize this? Glastonbury Tor. What do you know about the Tor? Good place to deploy artillery. Right. Okay, thanks. The store was called the Cosmic Fairy. My mind boggled. There was a guy outside the bar. He looked like he'd failed an audition for our man in Havana. Hi, my name's Stobart. George Stobart. How fascinating. Two T's and two B's. You'd be amazed how many people get it wrong. 
Ah, nothing amazes me these days. Eamon O'Mara. You're Irish? No, no, I'm from Hawaii. The Maui O'Maras. You're not from Hawaii. No, I'm not. I lied. Very astute of you to see through it. You clearly have a lucid and highly rational cognitive process. So what do you want, Mrs. Dobart? Does this ID card mean anything to you? It's an unflattering photo. It doesn't look anything like you. That isn't me. No, didn't think so. You're one of those godforsaken photogenic types, aren't you? And no, it doesn't mean anything to me. You sightseeing? I'm researching. Outside a pub? I'm researching the alacrity with which this place opens. In a civilized society, a man should be able to get a drink at this hour. It's ten o'clock in the morning. Precisely. You can't need a drink that much, can you? Ah, uh, now that's a complicated question. Let's discuss it over a beer. Uh, it's too early for me. Very wise. I'll be rattled before me time. Me liver riddled with the cirrhosis. Rattled, a hand riddled. Ah, well. So, what do you do? Um, good morning. I'm Eamon O'Mara, and today I'm in the enchanting town of Glastonbury. I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. Of course you haven't. Now wait a minute. I'm here as a professional media Irishman, researching my new BBC program. Oh, you're putting together a TV show? Bingo! Give the man a figurative coconut. I visit villages, interview the local characters, sample the local cuisine. What's the show called? Up Your Alley with Eamon. Nice! And you're doing this place next? That's that finely tuned cognitive process of yours in action again, isn't it? Does this postcard mean anything to you? No. Should it? I guess not. It was a long shot. Who's Bruno? I wish I knew. What do you think of the town? It's a theme park. So where'd the tourists go? I don't know. Maybe it's out of season for hippies. Do you know much about this place? It's got half decent pubs when they're open. Oh, I see. You want to know about the fairy stuff, don't you? Fairies? You see that hill? Yeah. Fairies guard King Arthur's sword Excalibur under that. Really? No. Have you seen that guy walking up and down? The army type? Hmm, kind of Englishman I'm allergic to. Oh? Why is that? Well, if you have a couple of hundred years, I'll explain it to you. I'm worried he might be out to kill someone. Ah, now you're beginning to understand my allergy. How did you get into television? By accident. I was doing a reading at a bookshop in London. This wild-eyed BBC producer wanders in, points at me like I'm the second coming, and says, You'll do, you'll do! You're a writer? Wash your mouth out. I'm a poet. Poetry is a gift to the Irish from the gods themselves. Yeats, Wilde, Joyce... Bono! Don't push your luck. I may have the soul of a poet, but I've the fist of a welterweight. Hi, I'm... Nobody tell me. Me a Madam Zazi. Me know all. I me see all. Sit down, you. You have traveled far. Oh, sure. Like my accent was local. You come for the truth. And another no-brainer. Judge Stubar. What? How did you... Me know all. <laughs> me see all. Okay, I had to admit. That stumped me. How long have you lived in Glastonbury? Long time. The toad generate wave of positive energy. And tourist revenue. A girl can't live on good vibrations alone, huh? Recognize this postcard?
Mm hmm It is the tour. These are Priscilla and the Cosmic Fairy. Yeah? Thanks. I'll check it out. These were the kind of books that sat and glowered at you, casting the runes, the real Eltdown shards, Karnaki the ghost finder. Even the air felt cold near them. I didn't want any of the books, not my idea of a holiday read. Miss Granger's Perfect Potions. Love potions, money potions, potions to make you taller. There was something in the small print. Granger Publications cannot take responsibility for side effects or failures in primary potion effects. Guess even witches fear the wrath of the litigation lawyer. On the wall was a chart telling me everything I ever wanted to know about pentacles. It could have been a lot shorter and done the same job. It was a chart about pentacles. Hey! Customers are not allowed upstairs! Right. Enchanted Avalon. Lays of a mystical age. Well, this looked like big fun. Ah, you found my little herb. I guess for an oeuvre, it is quite small. What do you mean? It's a book of poetry. It could be any size. Nice cover. Thank you. My choice, actually. I self-publish. The big publishers just don't understand spirituality. What's the deal with the coins? Joseph of Arimathea bringing the Holy Grail here. Arthur and Guinevere being buried here. And, of course, St. Michael defeating the dragon on the tour. Each silver coin commemorates an event in Glastonbury's history. History? Sounded more like folklore to me. Silver, you say? Well, silver plating. I have a dear friend who does them for me. For there was lightning in my blood, my dark Morgana. My own Morgana. For there was lightning in my blood. Red lightning lightened through my blood. My dark Morgana. What do you think? Uh, pretty good. Yes, I was rather pleased with it myself. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Welcome to the Cosmic Fairy. I am Tristram Hillage, the proprietor. May I help you? I hope so. I guess Glastonbury's a pretty mystical place. Almost too mystical to bear. Joseph Varimathea journeyed here. Yeah? The tale of King Arthur, Guinevere and Excalibur finishes here. Wow. And the tour, that big hill, is the gateway to Avalon, the land of fairy. We also get crop circles, UFO sightings. Is that everything? Well, then there's the ghosts, hellhounds, spectral lights. Okay, okay, it's mystical already. How's business? Rather good, actually. Seems quiet. You just missed the rush. What kind of people shop in a place like this, anyway? People with open minds. Do you keep your mind open to new possibilities? Oh, constantly. Some of the things I'd seen, I'd be a fool not to. You say you had trouble getting this published? Publishers? Ha! Philistines, a lot of them. What you need is to raise your profile. Advertise, you mean? Oh, I can't afford that. How about a little spot on the BBC? 
Eamon O'Mara's new show? That would be marvellous. Oh, but impossible, of course. Ah, don't worry. Eamon and I go, oh, way, way back. At least five minutes. Want me to have a word with him? He's right here in Glastonbury. Would you do that? Oh, thanks. Thanks awfully. I'll need to show him some of your work. Yes, of course. Here, take a copy. I'm sure he'll love your stuff. What do you make of that fortune teller? Madame Zazi. Very traditional. Crystal ball, tea leaves, tarot, the usual. Hi, Eamon. Have you been in that shop, the Cosmic Fairy? Oh, yeah. Always go there for me love beads. I was just asking. Enchanted Avalon. Lays of a mystical age. The book of poems was by the guy in the Cosmic Fairy. There were silver coins laminated into the cover. Hi, Eamon. The guy who runs the Cosmic Fairy might be ideal for your show. That old hippie. Oh, I've no time for the 60s. Kaftan stink. Timothy Leary was a turn-off. I'd rather listen to The Clash than The Beatles any day. I thought you wanted to talk to eccentric characters. Hippies aren't eccentric. They're pathetic. I think this guy's got something. Take a read. Enchanted Avalon. Lays of a mystical age. Oh, just what I needed. No, read some. You won't be disappointed. If you say so. For there is lightning in my blood, my dark Morgana, my own Morgana. It's not bad, is it? No, it isn't. Oh, there was lightning in my blood, red lightning, lightning through my blood. That's beautiful. It is that, just as beautiful as when James Clarence Mangan wrote it about his Rosaline 180 years ago. What? Look at this. The fairies are a silent race, and pale as lily flowers to see. That's Samuel Ferguson. Shameless. Absolutely bloody shameless. Darley. Griffin. Aubrey bloody the ver does his thievery know no bound? Well, he's stolen it all? Every word! Oh, oh, get this. The author reserves the right to be identified as the creator of this work. The grave robber little toe rag! I'll have him! Good morrow, fair traveller. How may I help you? To the island valley of Avilion, where falls not hail, or rain, or any snow, nor ever wind blows loudly, but it lies. I... 
beg your pardon? Deep meadowed, happy fair with orchard lawns and bowery hollows crowned with summer sea. And that's good. That's very good. Of course it's good. It's Tennyson, you tofu chewing twit. From his mort to Arthur. Not the Thomas Mallory one, but we won't hold that against him. Now, do you recall King Mark of Cornwall in that tale? I've read Mallory, yes, but, uh... You'll recall Mark has a big down on a knight called Tristram, then. Cos Tristram took something that didn't belong to him. Oh, God! You mean Melissa? Look, I, I can explain. No, not Melissa, you aegis! Is old! Now you've completely lost me. I'm talking theft and possession. Possession by the spirits of Mangan, Griffin and Devere, among others. Ah! Yes, ah! Tis a miracle that you've channeled all these great talents into your little book. Just a shame that they ended up repeating themselves from their own published works. Word for bloody word! Wait! I can explain everything! Now, that was my line. It was also my cue to make a move. Good. You explain. And in return, I'll explain to you the theme of boxing in Irish literature. Now, let's stay calm. Gosh! Hi! Sorry to just barge in here like this. I could have been getting undressed or anything. Guess we were just lucky then. Or not. What's your name? Uh, George. What's yours? Melissa. Have you come to save me? Melissa? Melissa Butley? How did you know my name? Well, your dad's stamping up and down the street like Godzilla, except scarier. Daddy? Oh my god, he isn't. Oh my god, he is! Oh, he drives me absolutely potty. You have no idea. You know, you remind me of somebody, but I can't put my finger on who. Perhaps we were sweethearts in another age. You know, underneath that brat exterior, you're really rather my type. About your dad. I say, you're not working for him, are you? No. Shame. I'd come home today if you were the pool boy. I guess your dad's just worried about you. Worried that I might have grown up? Well, he's too late. I have. And I rather like it. You got a boyfriend? You got a girlfriend? Well, uh, not really. Hmm. Interesting. So, you're on the run? Sort of. Your dad's a real ogre. Oh, he's a pussycat. Really? The frothing pit bull terrier type of pussycat. How do you know Tristram? I met him at the festival. Aha! He read me his poetry. You don't need to tell me the rest. Then he said I could come and stay with him. So I did. You poor kid. You and Tristram, is it serious? Hmm. Tristram is one of a kind. In fact, when I think of him, I go... <laughs> You know. The poor woman had been duped by Tristram's lies. I couldn't let him mess up her life. And she was bound to find out sooner or later. Look, Melissa, you hardly know me, but some things are better coming from a stranger. Ooh, is that a promise? These poems, Tristram doesn't write them. They're all copies. Well, duh. Obviously. What? I knew that. What? You must think I'm totally dim. No, I just thought he'd trick you, you know, put you under his spell. Oh, you're too sweet. George, are you for real? I don't... You've come to save me, like a knight in armor. Well, that wasn't my original plan, but it became an option. Oh, 
I could kiss you all over. Hey, steady. Remember the Geneva Convention. Who needs it? I don't take prisoners. I bet. So when did you find out about the poems? From day one. I wrote my thesis at Cambridge on Irish poets of the early 19th century. You're very gifted. Try me. Ha! <laughs> and Tristram doesn't know. But I know. Of course not. Why let a question of authorship get in the way of a good... Yes, why indeed. But all good things. With Daddy on the trail, I think I'd better split. Anyway, don't suppose you fancy a weekend in Acapulco? Jeez, I'd love to. But my Acapulco visa ran out just yesterday. What were you doing? Having a little conversation with Melissa. That's private up there. You had no right. Just like you had no right to be seducing that poor girl with stolen poetry. You had no right to interfere. She had a right to know. Oh, no. You haven't told her. Not about the poetry. You can't base a relationship on lies. I have to talk to her. I wouldn't advise it. She needs a little time to herself. Then she's going to stay with friends. I took more than a little pleasure knowing that he was the one who'd been duped. Maybe I should march right outside and tell Melissa's dad about you. Tell him that you've got her upstairs. Tell him that you've broken her heart. You wouldn't. What about that poor, innocent kid? Think what it would do to her. He ought to know. Please! Oh, God, no, you wouldn't. He'll kill me. You're breaking my heart. On the other hand... Yes, yes. You tell me what I want to know, and I forget about your house guest. Blackmail wasn't really my style. And suddenly, I wasn't so sure who was being duped anyway. Very well. Now will you tell me about Bruno? Well, he, he was here. But he's gone. He upped and went one night. Did he leave anything behind? He was in a hurry. He just grabbed his pathetic belongings, threw them in his bag, and off he went. He must have left something. Nothing worth looking at, believe me. Letters, notes, a phone number? No. He took everything with him. Only... Aha! So he did leave something. Well, yes. But what good is an old pair of pants to you? Pants? Give them to me. I found them in the laundry pile after he'd vermoosed. Did you examine them? No. What kind of a chap do you think I am? Excellent. Come on, let me see them. You're a sick man. What are you waiting for? Oh, man, these aren't pants. Yes, they are. No, they're not. These are shorts. What are you? Some kind of underwear detective? Oh, heck. I'll take them anyway. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I said. Hi again.
What do your powers tell you about that man outside the pub? Him come from across the sea. Him have strongly held opinions. Him seek knowledge, but not for himself. All that from your crystal ball? No, him just on the telly. That's him on Amara. What do you make of that guy pacing up and down the street? His aura glow, red with anger. Kind of matches his nose, then. Him I lost something dear from himself, and him can't do nothing to prevent it. Well, we all have to let go sometime. What do you know about that shop, the Cosmic Fairy? Them sell candle? Incense? Mm-hmm. But the owner? Tristan Hillich? Oh, me know him overwrought. There is anxiety in his aura. Got his karma in a twist, huh? Just trying to lighten the atmosphere. What do you think of this book, Madame Zazie? Me see those in the Cosmic Fairy. I like the coins, but me no care for the poetry. Hi again. Here, let me cross your palm with silver. Have a look at this postcard, please. Ooh, ah, ah, I see a man. Well, that narrows it down. A man, Bruno, fleeing from danger, him nearby and yet... There was nothing she couldn't have picked up from reading the card itself. No. The psychic imprint is too faint. Too many others have handled this card. Your own imprint is much more distinct. Oh? You'll be going on a long journey. Terrific. Am I going to come back? Perhaps, uh, perhaps not. I need something much more personal to this Bruno, if you want a better reading. Okay, let me cross your palm with silver. Again. I'd like you to look at some boxer shorts. Now just wait a minute. I don't want no funny stuff. No, seriously. I want you to use that psychic hoodoo on him. Very well. How did you know my name? Was that a psychic flash? A <laughs> lot! When you were talking to Eamon O'Mara, me was standing in my own doorway. Me overheard your name when you was introducing yourself. Ah! Cunning. The... Uh, item of apparel, please. Getting anything? Apart from nauseated. Cha, no, me sorry. Oh, no! What? What can you see? Dragon fire! No, a man and a dragon seek his death. He only has minutes to live. Oh, the flames! No! No, the f Madam Zazi? Madam Zazie? She was out cold, but okay. I must admit, sometimes my shorts had the same effect on women. <laughs> if she was right, Bruno would be dead soon. I had to act fast. But how? I didn't even know where he was. Luckily, I got a hint.
I tried to open the door. The door was locked. It wasn't opening time yet. I didn't have time to chat. A man's life was at stake. I need help. I'm an athlete, not a psychiatrist. I'm serious. There's a fire. Someone's trapped, but that door's in the way. Say no more. I may have the soul of a poet, but I'm the heart of a lion. Lead on! Excellent. Thanks, Eamon. No trouble. Just sorry there wasn't a camera crew around to catch me being heroic. I can take it from here. Sure. I'll call the fire brigade. Then I'm going to sort out that bloody thieving hippie. Hey, you, wait! Evil monks. I hate those guys. I didn't have time to go after them. If Zazi was right, Bruno was about to get a pre-mortem cremation.
Whoa, that was a close one. It was indeed a close one, yes. Thank you. I am indebted to you. Glad to be able to help, Bruno. It is Bruno, isn't it? Now I must be on my way. Wait a minute. We've met before. I know you. You know my name is Bruno, but I am not knowing you. Where do you come from? A small country in Eastern Europe. You would not be able to pronounce it. Wait a minute. I remember now. The foyer of the Hotel Ubu in Paris. You're Ostwald, the Nobel Prize winner. Oh, my goodness. Stobart! You're a Neo Templar, you son of a bitch! No, listen to me. I left the Neo Templars. They were evil. The Grand Master, he was all lies. The last time I'd seen Bruno was when I went head to head with a weird bunch known as the Neo Templars. It had ended badly at a place called St. Ninian's. And true, Bruno wasn't lined up with the bad guys when the curtain came down. Let's say I believe you. Who's after you now? The Neo-Templar Order was not destroyed, only badly weakened. It now seeks revenge against its enemies. In their eyes, I am a traitor. They do not forget. They do not forgive. Yeah, I'm not on the Christmas card list either. Hi, Colonel. Everything sorted? Soon will be. Just off to get party. Who was the weirdo in the monk's habit? I do not know. I think maybe one of Susaro's men. Susaro? To know him? As well as any stranger who tries to kill me. What's Suzaro's interest in the Congo? The Congo? Yeah, I found a postcard from you there. It's how I found you. Of course. My friend, Dudley Chumley. You mean Chumundali? No, no, no. Chumley. Drive him crazy being called Chumundali. Not anymore, I'm afraid. Suzaro got to him before I did. What about Chumley's machine? Did it really work? Poor Dudley. His machine, yes, it worked. But only at that one place in the world. Why there? Like St. Ninians, it is focus of natural energy. Geomantic energy. I have made a device that can locate the more powerful sites. And Cesaro is doing the same. But of course. Cesaro doesn't look like a well man. He has dabbled with the energy for too long. At first it made him strong. Now it has made him only more or less human. And he is dying. Success doesn't just mean incredible power for him. It means his very survival. Geomantic stuff is losing me. Imagine the world as living thing. Its energies, they run in lines through it. Like ley lines? They are ley lines. The Chinese call it the Dragon Current. So what has Cesaro done with this power? There is a place. The Temple of the Dragon. It is possible to make the energy there very powerful, very strong. Where is this place? Its location has been long forgotten. I think Sosaro may have found it. So, Susaro wanted the site in the Congo to use its energy? No. It was a poorly developed site and Dudley had already dissipated much of its power. But Suzaro knew this. He is not just tapping such locations. He is doing something else. How do you know? He is making the world sick. You have heard these reports of earthquakes and floods. Suzaro is doing that? They are side effects. 
Every 12,000 years, the energy builds up to a peak. This is natural. But Suzaro is changing the build-up somehow, putting the world in danger. I fear he has found the Temple of the Dragon and activated it. How did Cesaro get control of the Neo Templars? With the Grand Master dead, the Order fell into chaos. Cesaro quickly took over. Anyone who opposed him was dead within a week. So, Cesaro's now the new Grand Master? In all but name. He never liked the Templar trappings. He calls it now the Cult of the Dragon. Dedicated to giving him power. Power to do what? Anything, Stobart. And everything. So what brought you to Glastonbury? I was in Paris. It is a major power focus. Susaro's men found me. I was lucky to escape with my life. I came here. Why Glastonbury? See the tour up there? It is a power site, a very important one. Look at its history, its folklore. You know, Saint Michael, he killed a dragon here, on the door. Yeah, well, you can't believe everything you read, huh? Yes, you must. This is true. Cesaro's men obviously came here after you. They are on my trail. Why don't you come with me to Paris? Cesaro has many agents in Paris. I would be in deadly peril. Well, don't you think it's time we took this war to Signor Cesaro? Stobart, you cannot stop this dragon cult by yourself. I stopped the Neo Templars once. I can do it again. Let me at the thieving Aegis. Take my little Liss here, would you? I'm going to kill you, you blighter! Violence isn't the answer! Yes, it bloody is! Ow! Oh! Oh! Not the face! Not the face! Daddy! No! Trouble? Oh, just another wild party. Uh, I don't think we should gate crash. Two days! Lost! Two days in a stinking cell on blown-up charges! That stupid, stupid policeman! If I see him again... Yes? Alcatraz, who do you wish to talk to? Nico? Candy? Where have you been? Staying with friends. The boss is after you. Thanks for the warning. Keep him off my back, would you? I'll try. Thanks. See you. Bye. I still hadn't found what was so special about the dead guy. I thought I should check my messages. You have... new... messages. Bonjour, mademoiselle. I've got a very important word for you. Soffits. Now, when was the last time you checked your soffits? Hmm, I thought so. Well... I am calling from the Stop It Rotting Soffit Company, and I want to tell you about the Socket to em Soffit Offer. A 50% discount on all Soffits ordered before the end of the month. Just remember, your Soffits say a lot about you. Why not let us stop the rot in your life? Oh, and don't worry about calling us. I'll call you back. Nico, this is your editor. Remember me? Where in hell have you been for the last two days? What's all this nonsense about being arrested? Give me a call as soon as you get this message. Perhaps I should make a call. I wondered if Andre might have any ideas. Andre Labino? Hi, Andre. Nico! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for two days. The police arrested me. What? Are you crazy? What happened? They held me in the cells for two days on trumped-up charges and then released me without a word of apology. 
I just hope the trail hasn't gone cold. What are you going to do now? Look for more clues, I suppose. Andre, I'm going to get back to the investigation. Perhaps I should make a call. Better check in with my paper. The news desk? Hi, Candice. Is he in? He's in another meeting. He phoned me and left a message on my machine. I'll get him to call you when he's free. Bye now. Looking after houseplants wasn't my forte. The clown's red nose was a clue that George and I once found. It made me think of him when I touched it. George had given me this picture. I never could bring myself to throw it away. It was a photo of my old friend, George. I considered leaving the apartment and decided to visit Vernon's place. She asked so many questions. Odd questions. If you ask me, she wasn't really a reporter. She knows you are a witness. <laughs> Not that I want to worry you. Shh! That's her! Bonjour. <gasps> Bonjour, mademoiselle. I thought you'd been arrested. They released me. I didn't kill him. You made a mistake, Edith. Oh, I don't think so. About the woman you saw. I'm looking at her right now. Are there any details you can remember that might help? I told the police everything. Why should I tell you? Because she tried to frame me for murder. What do you take me for? A character in some kind of detective story? She's had a nasty shock. She's not the only one. She did tell me something. Something she overheard Vernon say. Go on. It could be important. He said the... The power was building up. And he mentioned a manuscript. I don't know if that helps. It might. Thanks. The door was locked. There wasn't enough of a gap to fit the card through.
The police had done a very good job sealing the crime scene. The flat had been securely locked up. I could see the key in the keyhole inside the door. I had to find out why Vernon wanted to see me, and why he was killed before he got the chance. This was an old trick, but it might just work. Let's see whether those old TV shows were accurate. Aha! Gently does it. It worked. The key landed neatly on the paper. The lock opened with a satisfying click. I had a pretty good idea who was going to be behind the door. Excuse me, Beatrice. Why have you come here? Didn't the police arrest you? They released me. I didn't kill Vernon, but I saw the woman who did. What do you want with me? I want to help. A girl should never be without a tissue. Here. I understand if you don't want to talk. <laughs> Thanks. Can I ask you about Vernon? He was very anxious to meet you. What did he want to talk to me about? Do you know? Not the details. He was acting so strangely. Go on. He said his life was in danger. Wouldn't let me come up to the flat. We had to meet in the gardens. Why was he so scared? It was... those people. Who? I don't know. They paid Vernon to crack some old manuscripts. I don't know why it was such a big deal. Anyone can see the manuscript on the internet. So did he crack it? Of course. Vernon's the best. He was the best. <laughs> so what happened then? They told him to keep quiet. Threatened him. That was six months ago. So he risked his life to speak to me. But why now? He said it was all coming true. What was? He wouldn't tell me. The stuff in the manuscript, I suppose. Do you know anything about Vernon's safe? Only that he's got one somewhere. You don't know the combination? No. It would have to be easy to remember, though. Vernon had a terrible memory. 
Really? I used to laugh because he was always asking me my birthday. Go on. What's your birthday again, babe? He'd say, 23rd of October. Same every year, I tell him. <laughs> okay, Beatrice. I'll leave you alone now. No, wait. What about that woman? What if she comes back? Don't worry. She won't. What are you going to do? I'm going to find her and get to the bottom of this. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. If you think of anything, or just need to talk, I'm at 361 Rue Jarry. Thanks. I appreciate it. Piecing together the information from Beatrice, I figured that her birth date was the combination I needed. Et voila! There were only two things inside. A hand-drawn diagram and a DVD disc. I had the DVD, and now I needed to take a look at its contents. Going back to my place was the best option. What the? I had the DVD, and now I needed to take a look at its contents. Going back to my place was the best option. was close? That was the sports car I was looking for earlier. I considered leaving the area and decided to visit my apartment. I didn't have the time to spend watching TV. My hands trembled as I slid the disc into the slot. What was so important that it got Vernon killed? If you are watching this mouse, then, well, you know what's happened. The whole world is in danger, Beatrice. The manuscript those people paid me to decode had a secret. A, a deadly secret. Though I didn't know it at the time. You know all those earthquakes and the crazy weather I've been going on about. They were predicted in the manuscript. Turns out it's quite famous. 
called the Voynich Manuscript. People have been trying to crack it for years, and I beat them to it. Me, Vernon Blier. I haven't decoded everything, but what I've seen is enough. It talks of a power so great, it could destroy the whole of mankind. It flows continually around the Earth along routes known as ley lines. The Chinese call them dragon lines. You know, an ancient civilization even learned how to use this energy, and it brought them great power. They became greedy. They lost control. Power surged. It almost destroyed the world. Beatrice, the people who paid me they want to harness this power. And if they do, it is the end of the world. For real! You'll find a diagram with this. It's important, but I haven't worked out why. Yet, two things I know are very important. Something called the Key of Solomon and the strange phrase. Devils and witches dance with cows on the Sabbath. The more I work on the manuscript, the more confused I become. And the more I fear for my life. Whatever happens, Bounce, I love you. I'd wanted a big story. Now it looked as though I'd found one. But what did it all mean? I was going to need help.